usually one lady on the main stage at a given time and you get to if not choose your exact songs at least choose the kind of music you want to dance to and when i got to new york it's like four ladies on stage at once and you're always dancing to techno and same in Vegas. It's like four ladies on stage and you're dancing to EDM. I don't know when those songs end. <laughs> they don't. <laughs> you tell me I'm supposed to be up there for three songs. When is the end of the first? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, you're just going to need to be like Jupiter, get off stage. Jupiter Jetson, uh, and I have been in the adult industry uh, consecutively and consistently for the last uh, six years. Six years. But you weren't six always years. Jupiter Jetson. No, I did start. Uh, so when I was still a baby harlot uh, at the tender age of 28, uh, I, uh, <laughs> I hadn't really thought to do like a, you know, just a basic SEO search or like a copyright search or anything like that right. so the name i chose was nova sky uh big problem with that is that novas exist um in the sky so every article that mentions a nova also mentions <laughs> the sky so i was never winning that seo battle over the literal sky yeah. um and there's also a hotel in dubai named the hotel nova sky so oh. like i couldn't like actually do business as nova sky so when i got a grown-up agent i uh stole the name of a children's toy apparently uh, <laughs> Really? That <laughs> there's there used to be I don't think it exists anymore. I think they renamed it possibly because when you Google it now you get pictures of my boobs. Uh but there used to be a scooter from the Jetson Scooter Company and it was the Jupiter Scooter. So it was the Jetson Jupiter, not Jupiter Jetson, but I think that my boobs might have screwed up their SEO because uh, now it's the now it's the Jetson Orbit. Like they same scooter but new name. So I think I think I can chalk that under an accomplishment. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> when when you have that much of an impact on 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 searches, search engines, and just uh, an industry in general, yeah, you can definitely uh, notch right, that into like, your. Right, like hey, yeah, you yeah. Have to change your name because of these. I love that. <laughs> you know, what, I I will I will actually back that up because uh, before I had a chance to, you know, you and I are talking now. I uh, do my little research and I try to find you know where you are in social media. And I did a, a search on YouTube and I found a channel. And we can talk about that. But I also found uh, Jetson Jupiter scooters and how to <laughs> assemble scooter. I'm like, what the hell is this? <laughs> yep, yep. On Google, I'm the first couple pages though. Yes, yeah, yes, you are. You are. You are on the top there. So you've been at this for a couple of years, and it was uh, recently that you said that you got yourself a grown-up manager, and you made uh, a few adjustments to how you approach the industry. And it was recently, too, that you started to get into the mainstream, uh, stepping away from independent work, and like, how has that transition uh, been for the past couple of years? Okay, so... Um I do want to just make a quick clarification because the word manager can have a oh. very different implication in my line of work. Okay. Um, I have an agent. Sorry. <laughs> I have a I have a film agent. Right. I don't have management. Um, but again, I feel like that's, if you know, you know, yeah. uh, one of those things. But yes, I have an agent. Um, and, uh, you know, the thing is, is I, do, I, I wouldn't say that I've stepped away from doing indie work. Like the... The projects that brought me into uh, filming uh, adult media, because I worked at the brothel uh, long before I got into adult film, uh, it was actually a client ordering a custom uh, or requesting a custom featuring me and an established uh, porn star, shout out Sage, uh, Sin Sage. Um, and I said, yes, because why not? I'm already you know, a harlot in private, why not a harlot in public? Right. 
I really enjoyed myself and Sin, who I think it's fair to say it's a bit of a legend. Uh, she herself was like, you are really good at this. You should consider doing more of this. And um, she kind of just suggested I get out there. And the next project I did with East Bay Brats, with the, which is like a, a collective. It's like a queer uh, femme BDSM porn collective. Mm. And I mean, I... We're still planning uh, another installment of East Bay Brats. I still film with Sin. I still do my own self-produced scenes. Uh, but now I do have the privilege of working with, you know, really big studios with really, um, you know, much better budgets and, you know, big crews. And so, uh, you know, if anything, uh, I think it's really just one more thing that I've taken into the fold of the red umbrella that I live my life under. And uh, it's really just kind of given me more resources to make the independent projects that I, I enjoy both, mind you, mainstream and indie uh, in equal measure and in some cases for different reasons. Mm. Um, but it's just given me a better understanding of how a professional set is run and how to handle things. And like, you know, it's it's been, if anything, it's been a very welcome learning experience, but I, I wouldn't say I've stepped away from anything. If anything, I just keep adding too much to the pile. That's fair. I mean, I recognize a workaholic when I see one, sure. <laughs> uh, so you've actually, you you currently have another stint right now at Sherry's Ranch, which is... Yes, uh, I'm coming at you live from the Roman bungalow room. Oh, wow. Okay, cool. Yeah. And uh, this is not your first stint either. You've, this is something that you've, you have a history with. Yeah, I mean, I, I I make no secret of the fact that I actually do very regular tours at Sherry's. Um, it's kind of what, it's just how I enjoy um, making the majority of my money. Uh, and it's a really excellent community here. So yeah, I'd say I'm here, depending on what I have going on between travels and all of that. I'm usually here, I'd say, usually around two weeks a month. You know, you've actually uh, established at a at a younger age, in your early twenties, that uh, you uh, are very much comfortable in a place of power as well as in front of the a spotlight. You uh, started an early career in domi as a dominatrix as well. You are and to this day a performing singer songwriter. Yeah, yeah. Hi. Um those are both true. <laughs> <laughs> so, how did how did how did you how did you discover those two aspects of yourself because they are both like commanding power and commanding attention while at the same time, I mean, two different types of performances. Well, okay, so I do like that you picked up on that they are both performances. Um, me personally, I don't identify as a lifestyle dom. I'm sorry if that uh, angers or offends anybody, but uh, I I was very lucky in that I was welcomed into a group uh, where a group space where I could learn the skills that are required to be a dom, mm -hmm. um, and I did. You know, uh, how do I say? I'm very glad that it was there, um, but it wasn't really something I went out with the intention of finding um it was really i was in college and i had already been selling panties online uh and i had before i moved to new york i'd been a stripper uh but i didn't like how strip clubs worked in new york um i and it's a similar issue with most of the strip clubs in Vegas, actually. Um, there's only one club that I've really found that I like that operates in a way that is similar to how the clubs in Ohio operate, which is usually one lady on the main stage at a given time. And you get to, if not choose your exact songs, at least choose the kind of music you want to dance to. And when I got to New York, it's like, four ladies on stage at once and you're always dancing to techno and same in Vegas. It's like four ladies on stage and you're dancing to EDM. I don't know when those songs end. <laughs> they don't. <laughs> you tell me I'm supposed to be up there for three songs. 
when is the end of the first? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. yeah, you're just gonna need to be like Jupiter, get off stage. <laughs> like I have no way of knowing when I'm supposed to take my t- like my boobs out. Like yeah, I yeah. don't know. So I just that kind of environment stressed me out. So I quit dancing and I was selling underwear and. You know, that kind of left a bit of a financial uh, void, if you will. Mm. And uh, a friend of mine was like, you'd look great in latex. Yeah. (laughs) There's these dungeons that are always hiring. And she knew because she had done her fair share of turns in the dungeons in New York. So... Um, I got hired at Salon de Sade and they were very nice, uh, and taught me how to beat somebody up without, you know, murdering their kidneys. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's a good skill to have. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. it's an excellent, it's actually a more important skill than being able to beat someone up. It's how to beat <laughs> them up without actually murdering them. <laughs> uh, so, uh, you know, always grateful for that. Uh, mm. but but yeah, I you know it was an excellent way to uh, pay for the textbooks. <laughs> so it was it was through that that you you were brought into like a welcoming environment and was basically uh, like helped along the way. You found your own uh, technique, you found your own character, you found your own voice, and through that you were able to transition or not transition, but move smoothly into. Uh, different projects, which brings you to working alongside uh, Pure Taboo, Brazzers, Fake Taxi, and other uh, performance studios. I will say, Pure Taboo is on my bucket list, but unless I'm missing something, oh. I I would love to have worked for them, but I don't think I have, unless there I'm- was a scene that I did that was released under their umbrella. And because sometimes that does happen where like I find out like after the fact that like, oh, that scene for Gamma was actually for like because they're owned by the same studio. Like I'll be told it's for Gamma, but the actual website is like mommy blows best, you know, (laughs) because it's under the Gamma umbrella. Right. You know, so maybe. But to my knowledge, but shout out if anyone from Pure Taboo is watching, please. Yes, I'm a pervert. (laughs) <laughs> that, that, that's as absolute like you want that is you the want element that. I shine in anyway, <laughs> I so I so um I'm I'm reading off of the uh the tip sheet that I was provided earlier so uh, again like it is it's it, okay yeah I have you to, know I'll, I'll, I'll ask we'll, 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 maybe we'll I put have this, worked for them and I didn't know yeah exactly we'll, 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 we'll put this down as saying like uh, this is something to happen in the near future so when someone else watches this in the future it's already happened so. We're like really horny manifesting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm here for it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you take it upon yourself to answer a lot of questions on social media, primarily on TikTok. And the questions do heavily involve of like, how does one get to experience what you have to offer? And you, you've created this uh, incredible community that is, Curious, a little horny, but at the same time, like very supportive. And w- like, well, how has this come to be, and how does this feel for you? Um. Okay, so I, I the whole like you're talking about. I would imagine you're 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 referencing TikTok. Yes. Yes. Um, sorry. I, I yeah. 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 No, yeah. it's okay because <laughs> um, TikTok has been super surreal. Um, it has been super duper surreal. Like, if you can't tell from my smile, I mean that in like just the best of ways. Uh, yeah. I had a TikTok account for the longest and I didn't really touch it very often because I was a little bit kind of like, it's a bunch of like, you know, it's nothing but a bunch of barefoot kids in here. Like I, (laughs) it didn't feel right, but I, you know, kind of realized that the average age of TikTok users has increased dramatically. And so I only started using it in like August. Like, it was like August, I started using it as a medium to answer some of the questions that people throw out there at me. Um, I think my first video was actually because I had like, I get a lot of emails in my Sherry's, uh, to my Sherry's inbox Mm. that are asking me to come to their hotel rooms in Las Vegas because we are the closest brothel to Las Vegas. I mean, chickens next door as well. We're, We're... we're lot buddies so like 
Whoever wants to fight, whether it's road or crow flies, either way, we are the two closest. Right. Um, and I, I made my first video that was just me explaining kind of like a PSA. I know that lots of people think that sex work is legal in Vegas, but it's not. It's, it's actually illegal in Clark County. It is legalized in rural counties in specific instances where we have to follow a very specific set of rules that involve an overarching brothel, um, you know, that we have to work under. Uh, and I made that PSA and it got like 2 million views, um, which was in, insane. And so I've just been kind of going from there and like, I don't get me wrong, there are plenty of, it's the internet people, uh, I, I got transvestigated like my first week because of this voice. <laughs> Really? Yeah. And I'm not, I, I'm sorry. I take the Lady Gaga approach to that. I don't. So what if I did have a dick? I mean, I wasn't blessed like that. <laughs> Got, you know, yeah. like the universe, unfortunately, did not give me a penis. Like, you know, I'm sure it would be fun, but I don't have one. I'm not going to clear that up for the internet, though. Let them make their. It tripled the subscriptions to my OnlyFans. I'll say that. <laughs> oh, hey! <I'm> a... <laughs> people, people. At the very least, I can only assume people just going to your OnlyFans, going like, "Really?" <laughs> Does she? No. Yeah. Go for it, buddy. Yeah. But, but no. In general, though, in general, TikTok has been overwhelmingly positive. Like people have been really supportive, and on top of that, uh, I've actually uh, been meeting a lot of people here at the ranch, and I keep hearing them say like I found you on TikTok and I wanted to meet you and unlike a lot of TikTok stars I do really have that interactive ability like mm -hmm. you don't have to wait for a convention if you're motivated and you know have a valid credit card in your name yeah you can make that happen <laughs> that's all that's all that's required honestly <laughs> um with uh with with your uh Sorry, you, you stumped me there. I, I couldn't get over the whole, do you have a penis or not? <laughs> oh, it's okay. I mean, personally, I thought it was hilarious. I mean, just, I mean, one, don't get me wrong. Yeah. I've had to like, like, I've had to answer the question, is this a sir or a ma'am oh, on the phone more times than I would care to admit. But yeah. this voice paid my bills for years. I have no self-consciousness about that. And, uh, there's hours of footage of my genitals on the internet. If you can't spell my name to find out for yourself, that's on you. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good way of putting it. <laughs> uh, speaking of your your voice, uh, you do have uh, you do have music. You are a singer songwriter, and I actually uh, I found you on Spotify. You have I think six or seven songs that have been uh, posted on there. And you do have an incredible singing voice and a talent as, as like, it's, it's, it is very, not to draw a direct parallel, but like uh, Lady Gaga, Miley Cyrus, that sort of feeling, but also you, you slow things down and you add a bluesy aspect to it. I do have a question about the song Berlin. Okay. Um, my, my German is not the greatest, but. I believe you're you're asking the question and you're answering the question within that song. Do you understand? I don't think you understand. And this is all to do with what? Could you help me understand this song? Um. So that song I wrote that song um, years and years ago. And if I'm being like, I wrote that song when I lived in Berlin. That's why it's it's called Berlin. Gotcha. Um, and, you know, uh, I wanted to write a song that had, I wanted to have a song that had German in it, which is a somewhat vapid reason uh, to write a song. But uh, I was in a relationship with somebody who was struggling with pretty severe depression. Um, that song and actually apathetic, which all of my songwriting, I tend to do in the first person. Um, but actually those songs, neither of those songs are actually about my personal experience. Mm. 
Um, those are uh, actually something I wrote. Um, both of those songs I wrote after watching my partner like struggling with um, not feeling it was worthwhile to get out of bed. <laughs> gotcha. You know, extra ironic. They had to learn the guitar parts to play them in the band we were in together. Oh, <laughs> some added motivation, <laughs> right? Yeah. Like, oh, hey, in case you didn't know what you look like. No, um, <laughs> they supported. The, we 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 wrote apathetic together, gotcha. which actually I think apathetic. I changed a lot of the names of the songs um, when I I used to perform under my uh, government name. Okay, and so I changed a lot of the names of the songs. So uh, Berlin um, has is that's Berlin. Apathetic, I think. It got changed to the name Terminal. Ah, Terminal okay, is now yeah. apathetic. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. Um, but Terminal and Berlin are about the same person. I kind of yeah. There was definitely a, a thread that was going through a couple of the songs there. So again, like actually, weirdly enough, so is Grandma's Boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that relationship gave me three fifths of my EP. Jesus. <laughs> clearly, clearly you were involved and you were invested. Oh, and, you know, I love a mess. That's fair. I love a mess. <laughs> I love a messy, messy McMess. Oh, goodness. On, on Instagram, you have been uh, uh, taking to uh, producing videos where it's just you and a guitar. And there was one, it was like, I think you were in a... a a panel uh, like a conversion van or a panel van and it was like a, a landscape in the background and you're just sitting there singing and jamming it was beautifully done is music something that you still pursue to this day so um and it's funny i almost didn't share that video oh. like that was just something I, I wanted to be able to remember like that jam session um but uh I pursue music in a way that I wish all artists were free to pursue music because I, I am of course still pursuing music, but I, I actually don't want that to be how I have to worry about paying my bills. Right. Like I, I, I paid my rent with music before and you know, it was all right, but I, I know what it is to make something, you know, that is very magical incredibly mundane right. you know so um i pursue music as something that brings me peace and solace and i also pursue it as like the artistic outlet that i i need like i would like to produce a show uh that is kind of a melding of both i would like to I, I keep, I've repeated this so many times but it's absolutely true and i will find a titty bar that will indulge me I want to do for strip clubs what like Tiffany did for malls. Like I want a concert tour of strip clubs, but um, it's like it, it, it's difficult to explain to a feature agent the vision. <laughs> <laughs> I I pick up what you're putting down absolutely, but Thank I can you. understand. <laughs> yeah, it's hard. It's hard to pitch the vision. Like no, no, no. I want it's a concert in yeah. a titty bar. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, so yeah, no, I do still pursue music, but it's not, I don't have any desire to make music how I pay my bills. So I feel like in a culture that values capitalist reward over all else, I, the answer would probably be no, but my answer is yes. Yeah, yeah that's fair. You know, it, it's, uh, as I've uh, done some research, it's good to have these these fun creative hobbies and you know playing music playing guitar writing songs is definitely a creative outlet that nothing else can really uh fulfill it is something that's very unique uh during the uh the pandemic uh, you you stated that you picked up some different hobbies including knife throwing how is that going and do you still you still uh, toss the odd blade I do actually. Really? Um, I I do. Uh, I have like perfectly balanced Smith and Wesson throwing knives, um, and I do still occasionally practice. I've uh, I've done a lot more uh, archery lately because there's an archery range down the street from uh, one of the houses that I <laughs> spend a lot of my time at. So, mm -hmm. um, but yes, I do. I do still uh, throw knives. I still hula hoop. I still 
<laughs> all of the random random that I get myself into. We, 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 we had to do what we could to keep from going insane. I understand. Yeah. Got to keep that dopamine flowing. <laughs> exactly. My my hobbies are, are on display behind me here. It's just loads and loads of video games and 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 trips and stuff. Like that. So I get it. Absolutely, I get it. I think I followed you today on Spotify, Instagram, and TikTok, and I saw there was a YouTube channel with your name on it, but I wasn't sure if that was actually you. So uh, I actually I have to check that because. There might not, there might be a catfish on YouTube because yeah. actually I don't think I've touched my YouTube channel since I was Nova Sky. Gotcha. Um, because I, I know that YouTube is not particularly friendly. I mean, even to sex educators, let alone harlots like myself. So, um, you know, I, I don't really do anything there. I had a YouTube, con I actually only have a YouTube profile because uh, there was another channel i don't know if you've heard of sex explanations yes um yeah they interviewed me and one of my coworkers, and i had to make a profile just so that i could like have a place for like people to find me because right. it went lightly viral yeah um but yeah no that might have been a catfish so good looking out i'm gonna actually be looking into that after i'm done here fair enough <laughs> well i found out that i have someone had to like let me know that i had like a bunch of catfishes on TikTok. Like there's a couple of TikTok accounts that have started trying to pretend to be me just by like ripping off my videos and reposting them. It seems to be a bit of a problem, doesn't it? It's unfortunate. It's almost like these websites should verify sex workers. But, almost. You know, <laughs> Who the fucking thought? <laughs> yeah. Um, thankfully for me, um, and I mean, maybe this will change um, at some point in the future, but I've been, thankfully I've, fall, I've flown fairly under the radar for most catfishers. Um, so I actually haven't really had, um, I've had like one or two people who have come to me like in my inbox and be like, hey, you know, I sent you a couple hundred dollars and you never sent me this thing that you promised me. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> but, um, I mean, I've, I've heard, you know, I've heard the, it's mostly that because most of these people who are catfishing are doing it because they want to get paid without having to put in any of like the actual work. So yeah. Yeah. that's, that's mostly what it is, is scammers. Um, but I'm, you know, I've been lucky that, you know, knock on, knock on couch. Um, <laughs> it hasn't been a problem for me as much, but I, I, I make it pretty clear to everybody that I don't do backup accounts. I don't, I'm not on dating profiles. I'm not like, if you see a person that is using my pictures and it is anything other than at Jupiter Jetson, all one word, no letters, no numbers, none of that weirdness, you're probably, you're getting catfished. Yeah. I, and also I've never made it my business model to ask people for money. I sell products, I sell services, I sell my uh, time just like any other contractor would, but I don't expect, I don't ask my fans to bail me out of sticky situations. Not that there's anything wrong with that when people do, but that's just so antithetical to my brand. Yeah, no, that's fair, absolutely. I have a couple of questions from some of your fans. Uh, if you don't mind, we can, of I can course, ask yeah. you, you can answer. And then I have a, a question that I've been asking all my guests over the past year that we'll get to at the very end here. So uh, your first question from Matt, uh, he asks, the tarot card on your leg is beautiful design. Is that the card of justice? And why is it on your leg? Um. So uh, I'm actually not... I. Thank you for the question, one, and good eye. Um, so the tarot card on my leg, uh, if I remember correctly, was the Nine of Cups. Okay. Maybe it was the Nine of Swords. I don't remember which it was because I actually didn't choose the design because it was a tarot card. Um, I chose the design uh, because it is Athena with her owls. Ah, um, okay. Which, um, 
I, I'm a big fan of like mythology and uh, my tattoos maybe don't all necessarily have meaning. This one actually does though. Um, it was my one year anniversary at Sherry's branch um, oh. because Athena is the goddess who is um, both in, you know, she's attributed to being the goddess of hearth and home, you know, but she's also the goddess of war. And uh, both of those things in combination with each other just felt really right for a tattoo to commemorate a year at a brothel. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, Kat asks, what do you do to clear creative writer's block when it comes along every once in a while? Or has it happened to you at all? I, I believe this has to do with songwriting. Um, In general, so the thing about songwriting for me is that... Um, my writing process is more like freestyling and I don't know everyone writes songs differently, but I've met a lot of song songwriters who write like me and the way I kind of view it is it's not writer's block when I'm not able to come up with something. It's really more along the lines of that chord progression is not really speaking to me mm -hmm. musically. So when I have, because that's how I write songs, is I will come up with a chord progression and, you know, I will loop that progression until I kind of feel it in here. And then I just kind of start blurbing out, you know, phrases of melody or lyric, what have you, until something kind of hits and sticks. And then I'm like, okay, that works. And I can keep going with that. And once I've been able to freestyle, like a solid verse or two like that. I kind of pause, write it all down. And then it's usually only my last like verse, two verses maybe that I am actually sitting down without music and finishing out and fleshing out the writing. Um, and so when I have any kind of block like that, I just recognize that any time I've ever forced a song, it's never been good. It's never been something that I add to like, I've got to record this to that list. And I just move on and try a different progression. That's fair. I mean, that's a great way of doing it. I know a lot of other uh, songwriters, they do the same thing. It's just freestyle jam until something sticks, really. Yeah. 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 If you're not feeling it, you're not feeling it. And that doesn't mean you'll never feel it. Like you can always revisit stuff. Like I've written lyrics for progressions that I've had for like five years and never been able to do something with. Like you never know when it's going to hit. Yeah. Fair enough. The question I've been asking everyone over the past uh, year and change is uh, what was your first paying job? Like the first job you got a paycheck. <clears throat> I've got to think about that. Um, well, my first paying job, I didn't get a paycheck because it was under the table because my mom delivered pizzas there. Oh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> nothing wrong with that. So, yeah, so I waited tables at the pizza shop that my mom delivered pizzas at when I was 13. Uh, but my first paycheck came from McDonald's. That was oh. my first over the table job. Well, there you go. I'm, a lot of great people apparently have worked there, so. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Okay, so uh, before we go, uh, where can people find you and, on social media, online, and if they wanted to come by and say hi, which they can, uh, where can they do that? So uh, you can find me on social media. Uh, I'm on, uh, for Safe for Work, I'm on Instagram and TikTok, although volume down on TikTok for sure. Um, I am also on Twitter, as well as OnlyFans and many vids. Uh, you can find my music everywhere that streaming is available. I'm on Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube Music, all of those. You can find me, same name, Jupiter Jetson, um, and uh, in person here at Sherry's. Just ask for Jupiter. I, I am here. Uh, you can always make an appointment, send me an email, uh, reach out anywhere on socials, and I'll be happy to get to know you <laughs> i'm what? always so bad at, at, at <laughs> it's, i suck so it's, bad at it's it, the closing like, that's I'm always the toughest part like i got everything so else hard. and I'll then afterwards like, like so yeah that's it uh <laughs> bye now 